Hi, brothers and sisters. This is Ryan Zell of Christian Virtue and Grace and also of the Catholic Forum on Discord app. Catholicism is a monotheistic faith, meaning that we worship one God. Every Sunday, when we recite the Nissan Creed, Christians profess their belief in one God who is a creator of the universe. Who is this God? What can we say about him? What has he revealed about himself to us? It is not enough that one believe God exists, but God wants us to know him. By knowing God, we can come to love God. By coming to love God, we will wish to serve him. The Catholic Church wants all mankind to come to know God and love and serve him. In doing so, we prepare ourselves to be eternally happy with God forever. This is the reason the Catholic Church exists to bring people to God and thereby have eternal life with him. Heaven show forth the glory of God, and the firmament declareth the work of his hands. Day to day uttereth speech, and night to night showeth knowledge. There are no speeches nor languages where their voices are not heard. Their sound hath gone forth into all the world and their words unto the ends of the world. Psalm 192, verse 5 and 4. Throughout human history, man has continually searched for God. This quest for God is evidenced by religious beliefs, customs, and practices in every culture in their prayers, sacrifices, rituals, and ceremonies. While these vary between every culture and religion, these forms of universal religious expressions evidence that man is a religious being desiring God. God makes himself indirectly known to man through the created world, human consciousness, and providential occurrences. God leaves his fingerprints in his creation. Man, through his experience of the world he lives in and through his ability to reason and by his intellect, discern the existence of God indirectly. While one cannot prove the existence of God directly through the natural sciences, there however exists a convergence of convincing reasons to attain certainty of truth. God intends man to know him. When God created man, God created in man's nature a yearning to know his creator. This is a void in man which only God can fill. It is in the nature of man to come to know his creator and give him worship. The desire for man is written in the human heart because man is created by God and for God, and God never ceases to draw man to himself. Only in God will he find the truth and happiness he never stops searching for. As St. Thomas Aquinas demonstrates through his quinquo via, Man is able to determine the existence of God from observation, reason, and by his intellect. God progressively revealed himself to his chosen people, beginning with the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the progenitors of Israel, making a covenant with them as his people and he their God. God chooses the prophet Moses as an authority for his chosen people and gives Moses progressive revelation of himself. God revealed himself through the prophets who were then to come after Moses so that Israel would come into a deeper knowledge of him and what he expected of them. God reveals himself to his chosen people Israel as personal God, making his name known to them. By making his name known to Israel, he makes known to them that he is not some anonymous force that exists, but a personal God. In doing so, God becomes accessible to Israel and is capable of being shown more intimately and addressed personally. He reveals to them that he alone is the living God and I am who I am. Moses said to God, Lo, I shall go to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers hath sent me to you. If they should ask to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who am. He said, 
Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, He who is hath sent me to you. And God said again to Moses, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent you to me. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. In revealing his name as the mysterious Tetragrammaton, which means I am who am, God makes an ontological and metaphysical claim and revelation of himself. Many, my existence is my existence, a declaration of the absolute simplicity of his being. In doing so, God declares himself to be ever-living God, the God of his loving fathers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that he would be with them unto the future from generation to generation. In revealing his name, God declares that he is the simplest of beings. Unlike created beings who have a separate essence and existence and therefore metaphysical complexity, God is metaphysically simple. The essence of God is to exist and therefore in God, his essence is synonymous with his existence. This notion of God's absolute simplicity is known as divine simplicity. Of all the religions on this earth, only Catholicism and Judaism accept this understanding of the divine simplicity of God, which can only be known through direct revelation. Much of what we can through reason know about God can be derived through his doctrine of divine simplicity. In revealing that he is substance and existence, God declares that he is the first cause of all being, all that exists. Only such a being who exists without a cause can be the first cause. Thus, there cannot be an infinite regression of causes, as at some point these chain of causes must terminate in some cause which does not have or require a cause for its existence. This uncaused cause, in whom we call God, in declaring his divine simplicity, God declares that he is first cause, which necessarily must exist. Due to the respect for the holiness of God's name, the chosen people of God, Israel, chosen not to pronounce the name of God, even to pray or conversion and in conversation. Rather, they address God in prayer as Adonai in Hebrew and as Karios in Greek or as Hashim in conversation. Adonai and Karios translate to Lord in the English language, and Hashim means the name. As Catholics, we follow that stricture, and not pronouncing the name of God denoted by the Tetragrammaton. When Moses asks God his name, in a sense, Moses inquires of God's identity as, Who are you? God answers in the simplest and most beautiful way possible. God speaks in the eternal and ever ongoing sense, the words Anya Asha Hayya, the meaning of which does not translate into English. In English, this is often rendered as I am who I am, which does not convey the richer meaning of the words uttered by God in his declaration to Moses. Ayya, carries the meaning of existing and of being in eternal continuity without completion and that of existence. Asha Ahyad had the meaning of who is existing or who is being. The Asher conveys quiddity, meaning essence. In other words, the oneness or whoness or whatness. Thus, God, the statement carries the meaning of my existence is my quiddity, or in other words, God states that his existence is his quiddity. God conveys to Israel that he is the being who is being. He is being itself, and all reality is guarded and grounded in him. All creatures and things, including the angels, are complex beings. By complexity, we mean ontological simplicity. 
Creatures and things have essences composed of form and matter. Of their essences may or may not be perceived through our senses or through our reason and intellect, and yet we can know these to exist. Complex beings cannot be reducible to one single thing and are said to be made up of parts, and these participate in the natural form. God is not composed of form and matter. God is not composed of parts. As one finds from God's direct revelation to Moses, he declares himself to be a metaphysically simple being. His essence is identical to his existence, which we term substance existence. As substance existence, God has no necessity, nor does his existence depend on a cause outside of his own being and therefore must be self-existing. The essence of God is existence itself. God declares that his essence is existence, thus making a metaphysical claim of ontological simplicity. God simply exists. In one declaration regarding his being, God makes several corollary claims which flow directly from this revelation. If God is ontologically simple, as he claims, then it must follow that God must not be limited nor can be causally dependent on something and therefore must be infinite in his nature. God is ontologically simple as he claims, then it must follow that God must be one God as God, as God cannot be dependent on another cause or being for his existence. If God is ontologically simple as he claims, then it must follow that God must be immutable as God, as an absolute simple being, must be fully actualized without any potentially, and therefore God must be immutable. God is ontologically simple, as he claims, then it must follow that God must be eternal as existence and the essence of God. This existence must be eternal, therefore God must be eternal. God is a self-existent being. A self-existent being cannot be limited in any manner unless by itself, as if limited by someone or something, it would have a causal dependence on that someone or something, and therefore, in effect, a dependent being, and it would follow that such a being is not self-existent. Neither can a self-existent being curtail or limit its nature without ceasing to be self-existent. The essence of such a self-existent being must be its own existence. God is unlimited in every kind of perfection, or that every conceivable perfection belongs to him in the highest conceivable way. Therefore, we can say that God is infinite in every perfection, and that there is no perfection that can be added to God to make him more perfect than he already is. There is no lack of any perfection in the nature of God. There can be no increase or decrease in the infinite perfection of his nature. Whatever perfection in the effects must first exist in the first cause, and imperfection must be excluded from this first cause. When we speak of God, we say God is infinitely good, intelligent, wise, holy, just. Thus we employ anthropomorphic language to describe God, treating God as some magnified man. Frequently the Bible and people speaking of God indicate that he sees and hears, loves and hates. This language is employed to describe in human terms the unknowable. However, it is in the highest sense of meaning that these attributes, such as good, intelligent, wise, holy and just, applied to God and are only analogously synonymous with the attributes which are synonymous with substance existence. Human beings can only know of these attributes in a finite degree that anagaliously exist in God in an infinite degree. We as Catholics believe that there is one God and only one God. The Christian faith confesses that God is one in nature, substance, and essence. There exists just one God whom we as Catholics worship. 
There is not other gods beside this one God. As God reveals, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. God declared to Israel, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. God calls Israel and the nations of the world to acknowledge him as their God. Be converted to me, and you shall be saved, all ye ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word of justice shall go out of my mouth, and shall not return. But every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall swear. In the New Testament, Christ affirms this anew. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with thy whole mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. Christ claims that he is the Lord, the Adonai of the Old Testament. How do the scribes say that Jesus is the son of David? For David himself saith by the Holy Ghost, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, and whence is he then his son? And a great multitude heard him gladly. There can be only one infinitely perfect being, as if there was a plurality of gods. Each its own being. Each would require a nature and some perfection not possessed by the others. Thus, no God would exist who is infinitely perfect in every way. All created beings have potentiality for motion, change, and possibility. And as a creature, man has the potential to change. Man can grow or decrease in height, weight, virtue, knowledge, wisdom, etc., etc. However, God has no potentiality. God is a fully actualized being. He is what he is from the very beginning. There is no possibility in the being of God that has the possibility to be actualized. Therefore, it follows that God is immutable and therefore not subject to change. No change is possible in God because there is nothing that exists in God that can be possibly changed. In the beginning, O Lord, thou foundedest the earth and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest and all of them shall grow old like a garment. And as a vesture, thou shalt change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art always the self same, and thy year shall not fail. And in Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor as a son of man that he should be changed. Since God is immutable, he cannot be something but what he already is, and this state of the immutability of God exists from past eternity to future eternity. There is nothing that can cause a change in God. When we speak of God getting angry or being saddened, we are in effect using anthropomorphic language. But in reality, there is no state of change that has occurred in God. When God says that he is angry or saddened, God is using anthropomorphic language to communicate and thus an act of condensation towards creatures. When God through his word began the creation of the universe, time was one of the effects of this imperative order. Time being an effect of material creation is ultimately caused by God. Time has no effect upon God. God is not governed by time or space nor affected by it. God continued to exist before time and was one of the effects of creation. Thus, we can say God is timeless. There exists no time in which God did not exist. God existed before time began, and when time ends in the future, God will continue to exist. However, as time is an effect, we ought to understand that beyond the bounds of time itself, God exists. Since man is bound to time, it is difficult for man to understand an existence without space and time, both of which are effects of creation. However, we can speculate 
sequences and succession of events or actions which potentially could have occurred. When we say that God is eternal, we mean that God has no beginning nor end. God has always existed as he is. As he possesses the divine essence for all eternity, he has no beginning nor end or sequence or succession of events or action. Sequentially or by succession, there is nothing before him or after him. God has always was and God always will be. God has no past or future and is eternally present without any finitude. The past, present, and future all exist permanently as a present to God. God creates everything that exists apart from himself. He creates everything, be it visible or invisible, material or immaterial. Everything that exists exists because God willed it into being. The universe exists because God created it. Nothing can exist apart from God. Written scripture begins informing the reader of the truth that God created the universe and everything in it. God has complete knowledge and awareness of all essences, also known as quiddities or substances that could possibly exist. Of those quiddities, that possibilities that could exist, he permits some to exist by bestowing existence on those quiddities. Thus, they become beings, meaning that they begin to exist. Thus, God upholds his creation at every moment of its existence. Creation is an expression of God's love. That which he loves, he bestows existence and thus willing it into being. It follows, therefore, that all creation exists due to God's love, and God's love is his creation. This is expressed by God in determining that his creation was good. God also expresses his love for man when he determines that man is very good. Man, made in the image and likeness of God, is much loved by God and placed above all other material creation. God is completely the other, as there is none like him in the universe. He transcends everything that exists in creation. While we can know that God exists, our knowledge of that God, even with divine revelation, is still very limited. Jewish scholastic philosophers, such as Rabbi Moses Maimonides, and church fathers, such as St. Clement of Alexandria, suggested the use of popophatic language to tell us what God is not, and through such negation, known as the via negativa, arrive at some understanding of to make some positive truthful statement regarding God using cataphatic language. St. Thomas Aquinas, a scholastic theologian and philosopher, suggests that one can use analogical language to describe God. Thus, some perfection that exists in God is related by the way of analogy to that which imperfectly exists in man. For these reasons, human language will always be limited when speaking about God, and there is nothing in human language that adequately describes the mystery that is God. Yet, we have a need, a communicative need, with others about God, and so we speak about God using our limited knowledge and understanding and our human reasoning. All creatures bear some resemblance to the divine in their essence, and among these, man was created in the image and likeness of God. So we can say that creatures reflect imperfectly some perfection that exists in God. Thus, even scripture speaks of God in such a manner. God roaring like a lion likened like a lamb, led to the slaughter, and having the strength of an ox. Scripture uses anthropomorphic language. God having a face and hands, and earth being his footstool. Written scripture speaks of God having human-like emotions, such as anger, love, and sadness. Yet, God has revealed himself to his people, the Catholic Church. 
God in the person of Christ reveals God and taught his apostles and disciples through the word out of his mouth a tradition which carries on to this day. In the Great Commission, Christ tasks his apostles, the bishops of his church, to go to all nations and to teach and then baptize them, and that he would be with them even to the consummation of the world. In this Great Commission, Christ as God expresses his desire that all may come to know him through his church, the Catholic Church. What God is God is a completely non-material being. By that we mean that he is not composed of anything. He is not made of matter or energy or anything. So we can say that God is an incorporeal being. God is a non-temporal being. This means that God does not exist within time, nor does God, time govern him. God can enter into time and act upon and within time. Time does not have an effect on God. God is a non-spatial being. God does not take up space, nor is he contained within space. God can, if he wills, enter into space and act within and upon and within space. Space has no effect on God. God is omnipresent. We do not say that God exists everywhere, but that he is present everywhere including in all times and places, without being subject to it. God is omniscient. By this we mean that God is all-knowing. He knows everything, what was, what is, and what will be. He is aware of human thoughts. He has complete awareness of every single thing which he has created. There is nothing unknown to God. God is omnibenevolent. God is all good. God is excellent in all goodness and all attributes and qualities of goodness are insubstantiated in God most perfectly. God is everything good and is completely incapable of evil. God is omnipotent, meaning that God is all powerful. God who is completely free in his actions is all powerful. There is nothing that he is unable to do in accordance with his benevolent nature. Questions to meditate and ponder upon. If God created everything, who created God? There cannot be an infinite regression of causes. At some point there must exist a cause which does not have a cause. This first cause is whom we call God. God is a necessary being who causes existence to exist. Without this first cause, nothing could exist. What direct scientific proof is there for God's existence? Well, God is immaterial, non-temporal, and a non-spatial being. Science is by its nature bound and limited to matter, energy, time, and space. Therefore, science is completely incompetent at investigating the existence of God. However, philosophy and human reasoning have a competency in this regard and can provide evidence for God through reason. St. Thomas's five ways are an example of this. Can God create a rock so large that he cannot lift? This is an omnipotence paradox. If God cannot create a rock so large that he cannot lift, the atheist would say he is not omnipotent. And if he cannot lift the rock he made so heavy, the atheist would say he is not omnipotent. The atheist wants God to act against his nature and in an illogical manner. It is impossible for God to create a rock he cannot lift because such an action would logically violate his omnipotence. Doesn't all religions lead to the same God since it is one God who makes himself known through natural philosophy? While philosophy and reason can tell us there is a God, it cannot tell us who that God is. Due to God's inexpressible and incomprehensibleness, the invisible and ungraspable essence, the God must reveal himself to mankind in a direct manner. Without that direct divine revelation, man will ultimately create a God 
in his own imagination and in man's image and likeness. While all religions contain some truth, each creates a false deity or deities to worship. How can there be a benevolent God when genocide, wars, and slavery exist in the world? Good question. Evil is the privation, lack or absence of goodness. In the absence of goodness, evil will manifest. While God is good, he gave man free will to either accept or reject him. Thus, when man rejects God, evil will ensue. Man, due to the fall, is separated from God, has a clouded intellect, and is, has concupiscence to sin. Evil arises out of man's actions and not from God. Natural disasters and calamities ensue as well. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to the Christian Virtue and Grace channel. You can find us on Discord at the Catholic Forum. God bless you all.